Hi folks, welcome to the SFOM channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. In this particular video, I want to cover my attempt to capture the Wizard Nebula. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Hi there, if you're new to the channel, my name is Wido Oerlemans and I'm an amateur astrographer in Utrecht, the Netherlands. And on my channel I share tutorials and equipment reviews that will hopefully also improve your own astrophotography skills. If you like that kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. It's greatly appreciated. And with that, let's move on with the video. So I'm behind my desktop and the first thing I want to say is uh, thank you to all the new subscribers that subscribed to my channel in, uh, in November. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate that. And uh, I have to say the Wizard Nebula data is from the end of September because since then uh, we have had cloudy nights in the Netherlands. And uh, actually uh, the last couple of days have been especially frustrating because uh, yeah, we have clear skies during the day but then uh, the clouds roll in uh, at night. And uh, actually I have set up my equipment twice uh, only to uh, get rain, uh, rain showers here and I had to uh, break down my equipment and move back inside again. So uh, unfortunately uh, no luck but uh, yeah eventually there will be a clear night I hope and uh, yeah this is also of course the first time that I have been using Pix inside uh, 1.8.8 to be exact uh, to uh, to stack and post process my images and uh, I have to uh, I have to say uh, that there is a lot of information out there and a lot of amateur astrophotographers that uh, that provide information on how to um, yeah, how to stack and how to post process uh, using Pix inside so thank you to all the amateur astrophotographers and uh, especially I wanted to give a shout out to uh, to Amy Astro. She has been quite uh, uh, yeah quite busy uh, uploading videos on how to stack and how to post process, uh, especially also narrow band images uh, using PixInsight. So I found her uh, tutorials really detailed and really useful. And uh, yeah, for me, I'm just uh, still uh, beginning and learning. And uh, yeah, it was actually. I liked it a lot the way she explained uh, everything. So Amy Espro, thank you a lot for uploading uh, these YouTube videos. And yeah, I will get my uh, uh, webcam out of the way so we can look at some of the pictures that I have came up that I came up with using PixInsight. So this is uh, uh, the H Alpha stack. And uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, these are about 65 images uh, stacked. Uh, each uh, the exposure time of each of the image was about uh, five minutes, so 300 seconds. Uh, cooled at minus 25 degrees Celsius. And uh, yeah, I, the, I have to say the Wizard Nebula is actually quite a small deep sky object, or it's not a small DSO, but for my refractor it is. So I have an 80 millimeter refractor, and uh, I combine that with my uh, CW Z. W O ASI 1600 Mono Pro, and uh, yeah, you can see here this is already a cropped image. So, uh, um, but uh, actually, despite the DSO being relatively small because of the gear I use, we can see still see some of the finer details of the Wizard Nebula here in the H Alpha stack. So I'm uh, I was really uh, happy with that actually. Uh, what I find very challenging and I'm still struggling with it. So if you have any kind of uh, information or uh, tips for me, I'm open to suggestions, is that we have here so many stars in the field of view. So this is a particularly uh, star rich region. Um, um, and uh, yeah, I, I find this on the one hand, I find this really interesting because you can so just see how many how many uh, stars there are out there. And if you think about the fact that there is at, uh, on average one planet uh, around every star, then uh, yeah, this, this, this blows my mind actually. But um, yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to deal with all of those stars uh, in this particular image. Um, so let's move on to the oxygen. Um, so yeah, I uh, also managed to capture some of the oxygen also using uh, 65 frames. So in total, uh, I have about eight and a half hours of integration time um, using all of the uh, images, the O3, the S2 and the H alpha. Um, and yeah, you can see here, uh, there is uh, uh, quite some uh, ionized oxygen in the picture, but still uh, I, um, uh, what was it? Yeah, I, I have seen pictures that 
uh, include more of this ionized oxygen. So maybe I have to collect uh, uh, more, more information, more data on this. And let's try to close this thing. Uh, yep. And then we are here at the, the third, so the S2 stack. And you can see, yeah, this is a nice looking uh, sulfur uh, ridge, basically uh, in the Wizard Nebula that uh, is also uh, in the picture. So that's very nice. Um, and of course, I uh, combined all of these images together and you get always these uh, green looking RGB combined image. And um, um, yeah, of course, I have used here the Hubble palette. So um, um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with that, so the, this is these are narrow band images and I have used the sulfur, um, blah, 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 the sulfur uh, stack for the green part of the picture, uh, the H alpha stack here for the Oh, the sulfur stack for the red part of the picture. I'm sorry, the H alpha stack for the green part of the picture and the O3 for the blue part of the picture, uh, for the blue channel basically. So, uh, and then you can see because the H alpha uh, channel or the H alpha stack has so much information as compared to the O3 and the S2 stack, you end up with this green looking uh, picture. And uh, yeah, in Photoshop shop. I always use the Hasta La Vista green uh, filter. It was freely. It's a freely available filter to uh, cancel out some of the uh, yeah the, the green that is then in your picture. And in the pics inside, you have um, uh, the SCNR. So uh, the color to remove green. Like the, the you can you can select the color green and remove move some of that green basically to get a more balanced uh, looking picture. And, uh, but I'm not going to give you any uh, any tips uh, whatsoever because this is my first picture. Um, and then, uh, yeah, going through several post-processing steps, I ended up with this uh, picture and pics inside of the Wizard Nebula. And uh, yeah, I'm still learning. That's basically what I want to say. So uh, you can see here, uh, I'm pretty happy actually with the, the color balance in the picture. And all. I'm also happy with... Uh, yeah, the details that uh, are in the Wizard Nebula, you can see it here. Uh, but I'm not so happy with all of these stars. Uh, I have been using a star mask, but still I have been unable to, uh, yeah, to really, really uh, contain uh, all of these stars that are in the in the picture. So any suggestions on how to do so, uh, they are uh, pretty, um, yeah, they are welcome. They are very welcome. Um, but yeah, uh, I have to say that. Um, because the DSO is pretty pretty small for my uh, refractor, I still like that there is a lot of details when cropping out the image and when um, yeah when post processing it uh, using pics inside. So I have been pretty happy with that, and of course I hope to uh, to give you more information on the steps you can um, you can do in pics inside to come up with this kind of picture once I get to know the program uh, uh, better. So. Um, yeah, that's actually all I have for you right now, folks. Uh, this is what I, uh, what I what I can share with you. I hope we have some uh, some clear uh, sky soon, so that I can uh, go out there and uh, image other deep sky objects. Hi, folks. We're at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, of course, I hope hope to see you in one of my other videos. And uh, until then. I want to wish you clear skies, thanks for watching, bye bye.